this. Great. So, Tom, um, we are ready to get started. We can see your screen and we're ready to go. Far. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Mary Ellen. So, uh, just a quick introduction. My name is Tom Seaman. I'm the sales engineer with AssetWorks. I actually started implementing the application um, many years back. And today what we want to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a PowerPoint, take you through just a general overview of kind of what the challenges are, what the product can offer, and then we're going to do a live recording and take you into some of the elements that make up the capital planning portal. So let's start off here. I'm going to get my mug shot off of the screen here. <laughs> and, you know, the first part of this, you know, as everybody knows, with the pandemic, you know, this has really affected organizations in many ways, um, not just you as our customers, but also us and the way we do business. You know, there's a, a lot less on site. We're doing a lot more remote training and implementation now. Um, and, and generally speaking, policy and procedures different now. Roles and responsibilities have changed across your organization. And, and you know, accordingly, we have to adapt to the way we're doing business. So. You know, the challenge, what's the challenge? There's a lot of challenges out there, but amidst all these different changes and, and different elements here are, are obviously budget concerns moving forward. So having that oversight of your budget, the funding sources that make up that budget, and also, you know, all the existing and future projects that are vital to your short-term and long-term planning, of course. So why capital planning? That's that's the whole purpose of the webinar today. So, you know, obviously it's more important now than ever, um, given all of the different challenges and everything's going to revolve around that budget and how you're going to go move forward. And so in the webinar today, we want to show you all of the functionality that's integrated into AssetWorks EAM from, you know, providing users the ability to manage plans and projects um, all the way down to tracking spending against those funding sources and budgets. So. Before we jump into that live recording, let's do just a general overview. And the first section that I want to cover is our plan metrics. So plan metrics is an area of the portal that displays plan and project budgets over time. These plans can be short-term or long-term, and those funding sources are tracked there as well. Um, and more importantly, you know, in the midst of all this is the um, – uh, projects and as works completed on those projects, you're going to be able to track spending real time. Okay. We also, as part of the portal, include goals, notes, and documents. Okay, so depending on what a user's permissions and authorizations are, they can get in and, and contribute um, to this overall plan. And then um, probably what I would consider the heart of the capital planning portal are the projects, okay? The projects, there could be one or multiple that make up a capital plan. You can create those and, and manage them based on user permissions, uh, and there's a ton of surrounding functionality. Um, we're going to go over some of the major elements today, um, but to give you just a quick summary before we jump into that live recording, um, you know, products can be set with approval workflows. You can rank and prioritize them. You can create projects as repair versus replace analysis. Uh, it also um, lets you add assets either manually or through our asset performance assessment portal. So uh, with that said, um, enough of the, the PowerPoint slides, we're going to dive into the functionality in a little bit more detail um, through our recording here, okay? So the first portion is choosing a plan, all right? So it allows you to, to create and manage an unlimited number of plans and permission them to users as required. Here you can see we're choosing a, a Rhodes Capital Investment Plan here. Some of the other basics are, are changing layout, okay? So depending on what you want an end user to be able to do or what you want to provide in there, you can change the layout. So that allows you to do things like add, remove, or change the view and functions of the portal. Um, we call these functions gadgets. Each gadget serves a different purpose and a different function. There's also, uh, a, as you saw previously, our goals, notes, and documents. So, you know, part of the introduction um, was the goals uh, planning and management here. So this allows you to create goals and the objectives under those goals. There's also a section where you can add notes. Pretty straightforward, but it, again, it's a central area where on the plan you can add notes and it time stamps it and the user, and then ability to attach documents, images, files of any type. You've also got the plan metrics section that we showed you in that screenshot in the little introduction. So plan metrics is where capital plan and capital project budgets can be viewed. So 
Funding sources um, that make up these budgets can also be shown here in that detailed pie chart. And as work's completed, the real-time spending shown. You can also permission users to manage those funding sources as well. So you can see in that drill down here, we can drill down in and, and manage and edit whatever you're permissioned to do. There's also the project portion of the plan metrics area of the portal. And this is where project budgets are also shown in detail with their breakdowns. And it also tracks real-time spending against those specific projects. Within that, there's a plan calendar and project list. The calendar shows a monthly, weekly, and daily view. And the project list allows you to drill down into the project to get into a little bit more detail. So that's what we're going to show next here. So, the, you know, some of the highlights within this, uh, there's a ton of different areas, as you can see. We're not going to cover all of them. Um, but to start, many fields are validated. So you can see that ellipsis button, the dot, dot, dot. That allows you to authorize users to reuse already created data and expedite the creation or update of a project. One of the main sections is our schedule section within capital projects, okay? So these projects that fall under the plan are going to have schedules. And you can see here the timeline that was shown in the calendar is driven from creating a project schedule here. You can edit these uh, schedules um, by adding phases, budgets, and plan versus actual start and completion dates. Work projects um, basically allow the capital project to be broken down into smaller projects and more specific areas of responsibility. So you can see here for this roads project, there's different work project elements. It also lets you track estimate costs versus, versus the current costs. Um, so as you're completing the work, you can see those changes. Then obviously there's assets, or in this case, segments of road um, that we're going to need to associate to this project. So here you can see in this instance, we're looking at road segments. It's going to be linear. And here's where you can choose that and add it to the project. Assets can be added through our performance assessment portal as well. So with the asset performance assessment module, you can group assets as you require or as you predefined. And then assets that have reached their minimum condition or performance score can be selected and then ultimately added to a project that would then fall under a capital plan. There's also uh, mapping uh, related to the project itself. So spatially now, we can view, um, in this case, the linear asset um, or assets that, that are part of this project. There's also the ability to track risks. Um, within the projects themselves, these risks are validated fields. So you can reuse them, they're reportable, um, and you can permission them accordingly as to, to who has access to this. There's also, I mentioned approval workflows that can be built into approving projects underneath a plan. So authorized uh, users can change statuses, make approvals, um, and basically uh, approve a project before it becomes active and ultimately tracks real-time spending. And then our last section that I wanted to discuss is score and rank. So um, again, authorized users can rate projects through this score and rank section. And project factors can be assigned along with a rating scale, like you see here. So as users rate the project, the radar chart displays what factors are most important to you versus the average score of all user ratings. So that, in a nutshell, is, is the, some of the major components of the capital planning portal. Um, obviously, you saw there was a lot of other sections uh, there that, that you could um, obviously take advantage of. Um, but at this point, what I want to do is, is just open it up to some questions, um, see if there's anything that maybe sparked some uh, questions or maybe any clarification on anything that I did show. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, Tom. So we do have some questions that came through about capital planning that you're presenting. So we're going to open up the floor. As a reminder to everybody on the call, um, if you have any more questions at the time, please send them to host using the WebEx chat tool on your screen. And then if we have enough time, I'll pass your questions to Tom and he'll be happy to give you an answer. But for right now, let's just jump into it, Tom. So the first question that we got was, can this sync with our financial system for budgets and funding sources? 
Um, yes, good question. So, uh, absolutely. So, for those of you who are familiar with the MaxQ integration tool, um, we can use that to create an integration um, for a one-way or, or bi-directional connection to your finance system or, or whatever third-party application may already have this data. Um, obvious benefits to that is um, you're going to make sure the data is consistent uh, across both systems and it removes the uh, need for double entry in there. So if it already exists somewhere, we can absolutely connect to that source in order to uh, reduce workload and, and make sure the data is consistent across both systems. All right, perfect. Another question that came in was about the asset performance assessment. So how does the asset performance assessment alert you to an asset that either needs to be re 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 sorry, repaired or replaced? Yes, so uh, the asset performance assessment portal, say, say that 10 times fast, right? <laughs> that, that portal, it, we really could do, and, and maybe we should schedule one in the future, uh, an entire um, webinar on that alone, but basically you're grouping your like assets together, defining a, a minimum threshold for its condition or performance score. Um, you get to define all of those condition scales, and then as you know, individuals are out doing the work, scheduled and unscheduled maintenance, um, they may or may not be required to update this uh, information, like you know, scores and conditions. And as they do so, that then in turn updates in the asset performance assessment portal. And when an asset reaches or drops below that, that minimum performance score, it will then A, send notifications to the appropriate individuals that you, you define, and also um, provide you the opportunity to then go in there, select those assets, and then group them onto that capital project like you saw in the, in the, uh, the little live recording that we did there. Great, thanks for that answer. So we have a couple more questions that came through. So this person is asking, as an AssetWorks fleet focused customer, how can we add EAM for our infrastructure assets? So, so EAM is actually uh, an additional module. So if you already have Fleet Focus, there, you don't need an additional database. It is not a separate standalone product. It is another module that you get licensed for. Um, with that said, um, some of the elements included in that are um, GIS integration. So we can connect to your GIS, um, which is what syncs up all the assets and allows you to manage all the maintenance, um, you know, and, and oversight and analytics um, of those assets. Um, that said, you know, there, there is a limited number of users um, within the application as a whole, so it really doesn't change much. It's just a matter of getting those users permission accordingly so that when they log in, if I manage stormwater, I will log in and only see the stormwater assets that I'm responsible for and the functions that I'm, I'm able to do. Um, so you can keep it uh, under one, one system, one database uh, in order to manage fleet and EAM uh, assets. Now, another point to make within there is that, you know, capital planning is primarily an EAM tool. Um, the, you know, the intent behind that and the way the functionality is built out is more meant to track those infrastructure type projects, not really just your day-to-day -day maintenance necessarily, um, but more or less, okay, I know I need to do the following work to repair or replace the following assets. I'm going to generate those projects and then associate the assets and work orders in order to track that spending. So just to just to clarify on that, because I know we do have some fleet folks on the uh, on the call today, um, but uh, absolutely great tool for for EAM uh, and managing different projects across different departments. Awesome, thank you, Tom. So another question that came in: um, Can EAM be interfaced with SAP Asset Master data? It could. So the, the quick answer to that is really we're not restricted as to what or what application we want to integrate to. Um, I think some of the other questions maybe to consider on that are, um, is this something where you're going to want to simultaneously um, maintain that, that record of data as well as ours? Or is this just a one time we just need to pull the information from there to get it into our system? So. Quick answer, absolutely. Um, longer answer is we would definitely want to like maybe sit down and talk with you about what that looks like and, and your intent with it and what you use that, that application for versus what your intent would be with EAM. Um, so uh, more than happy if you, if you did want to reach out, we can set up and do a follow-up meeting to speak more uh, specifically about that. 
Okay, great. And Tom's email is right on the screen too, if anyone wants to reach out to Tom directly, but uh, we do have a couple more questions that came through Tom. So bear with me. <laughs> so if we currently use uh, fleet focus M5, will EAM change how I manage fleet maintenance? No, not, not necessarily. So part of the, the integration can include the integration to M5 as well. So if you're happy with M5 and you, you just simply want to add on EAM, um, it's a matter of creating the integration, that link between um, M5 and EAM. All right, and a couple more questions. So are there pavement performance prediction curves based on functional classification and can the curves be customized based on subgrade strength? Okay, so so good good questions there. So um, the application does not do pavement management. We can integrate with pavement management in order to consume like PCI ratings and, and whatnot. Um, with the deterioration curves, okay, there are built into asset performance assessment portal, the ability to um, add deterioration curves and customize them. Um, it does not come with any like industry defaults in there. It's um, certain base deterioration curves that you can then basically change some of the elements in order to adjust that deterioration curve to your liking, save it and be able to reuse it. Um, that is something, again, if you're interested in, please reach out. I'm happy to, to dig into that a little bit more, show you what it looks like um, and how it's managed. Um, but all of those elements there um, are based off of your predefined um, scoring and condition scales. We don't calculate PCI in our application um, or, or you know FCI for like facilities, but we can consume those scores or set up the ability to update those condition ratings scores or whatever attribution that drives your, your performance uh, in order to consume that in the performance assessment portal and then ultimately let you move it to a project. Great, thank you. Another question that came in, um, I think this is more of um, an example question, but can the capital planning alert highway maintenance of future projects to alert them not to perform extensive repairs on an asset that is scheduled for a major overhaul? Yes, yeah, so uh, again, there's a lot of detail to that, how you would want to set that up, but the short answer is um, using the notification module um, within the application, we can generate um, any type of notification that you would require. So we would obviously need to, to look into the details of, of what the, the triggering elements are and what needs to be looked at to make those decisions. Um, but again, short answer, ab absolutely. As long as you know wh what you want it to trigger and how you want it to trigger, that is something that we can uh, build for notification purposes. Great, so here is another one. So one of the gadgets showed a functionality for decay curves. What types of assets can these, can these be applied to? Is it just roads or GIS centric assets or facilities assets? So um, similar, similar to the asset performance, um, you know, deterioration curve question that came through, um, same thing, it, it's not an industry standard necessarily by different asset types. It is a, a basic deterioration curve that allows you to go in and change different elements like expected life. You control all of that and then you can save that and then use those deterioration curves and apply them accordingly to different groupings of assets based on, on, on what you predefine. Okay, awesome. It looks like that is all of the questions that came through during the presentation. Um, if any of you guys have any other questions, feel free to send them in. But, you know, um, it looks like it, that's all the questions that we have so far. So at this time, I would like to thank all of you again for taking the time to attend today's presentation. I hope you've all secured some really valuable takeaways to keep in mind moving forward. And Tom, I'd like to thank you on behalf of AssetWorks once again for sharing your expertise with everyone today. Um, as you can see, everyone, uh, Tom's contact information is available right here on the screen if any of you guys have any follow-up questions. Um, actually, it looks like we might have gotten one more question that popped in, Tom, if you have time for it before I wrap everything up. Sure. Perfect. So can you... the whole hour. <laughs> Perfect. So can you give it... But uh, let me make sure I'm reading this right. Um, can you give it budget and let it predict where the network will be? So it is not, just to be clear, it's not a predictive forecasting tool. 
Um, all of those elements are plugged in, and it is a a, ma- a management of that that setup. So you're putting in or, or connecting to a system that provides your funding sources and the budget, and then you're moving in and out, you know, projects. You're moving in and out assets that fall under it. You're making adjustments to it. Um, it doesn't consume the data and then provide predictions or, or what, you know, what if scenarios on its own. Um, it, it is a manual management of it, but it's using the data that either you're integrating to or, or asset and project data that already exists within uh, EAM in order to, to manage that portal. All right, great. And I, we had one more question roll through. So, uh, Tom, you showed a timeline for projects. So oftentimes funding is dependent upon the construction funding. Can the dependency be based upon a middle timeline and go backwards to say push forward engineering steps? So, um, I, I know, you know, with, if you look at things like even just Microsoft project where moving one thing bumps it all. Uh, again, it, it doesn't have that kind of built-in intelligence to do that. Um, can you manually make those changes? Absolutely. Um, but it just wouldn't be something that would automate based off if I change this, it moves the whole schedule out. All right, great. So it looks like that's all the questions that we have as of right now. If any of you guys have any other questions for Tom, like I said, his email address is on the screen here. Um, but if any of you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. But otherwise, I hope all of you have a great day and we look forward to having you with us for our next webinar. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate the time today. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Tom.